Now that you have the three paths in place, you need to animate helpers to travel along the three trajectories. To make things easier, press T to work in the top view. Create a point helper anywhere in the scene and set its mode to cross and box and make its size about 10 units. Size doesn't affect the animation, it's just to make the helper easier to select. With the helper selected, go to Animation, Constraints and choose Path Constraint. A rubber band appears originating from the helper. Point to the first path you created, SIG Path 01, and click on it. The helper gets relocated to the start of the path and now travels the length of the path between frame 0 and 400. You'll need a few adjustments. First, you want to constrain the movement to a shorter time. Instead of starting at 0, move the 0 keyframe to frame 60. This way, there will be a 2 second delay before the point starts moving. Similarly, move the 400 keyframe to frame 120 so that the whole stroke timing is only 60 frames or 2 seconds long. Also, it's very, very important to use the constant velocity option. If you don't, the percent along path reading will become very unpredictable. To prove this point, consider that you animated the point between frame 60 and 120 to travel the length of the path. This means that you'd expect the dummy to be in the middle of the path, or 50%, at frame 90. And sure enough, this does seem to be the case when constant velocity is enabled. However, when disabled, the position of the helper on the path relies on the proximity of vertices on that path. So even though it says 50%, you can clearly see that the helper's position is closer to the end of the path. This unpredictable reading will result in problems later on, so make sure constant velocity is enabled. Still, if you play back the animation, you'll notice a burst of speed where the vertices are bunched up close to the end of the path. Go to about frame 110. The point reads a value of 83.333. It may read differently on your screen if you created your own paths. You need to slow down those last 10 frames of animation. At frame 110, enable auto key mode. Change the percent along path value to something close, such as 84. This is basically to force a keyframe with almost the current value. Move back the newly created keyframe to about frame 104. It is now taking a bit longer to close that final loop. Right-click and choose Curve Editor from the Quad menu. Notice that the graph representation is linear at this time. This is because the path constraint defaults to a linear float animation controller. Change it to a Bezier float to smooth it out. This actually adds a keyframe at position 0, but will have no effect on the overall animation. In fact, you can even delete that keyframe. Create a new point helper and position it on the second path, SIG Path 02. Constrain it to the path like you did before and set it between frames 130 and 220. The reason why this helper does not start at the same time the first one left off at frame 120 is because you want to leave yourself a few frames between the two pen strokes. Before you adjust the timing, change the controller to Bezier as you did earlier. Again, delete the redundant keyframe that gets created at frame 0. The motion is too fast around the knot area. Create a keyframe at frame 190. And then another at frame 203 by slightly changing the percent along path values.
relocate the two keyframes to get a smooth stroke. You can do more fine tuning to the animation curve using the curve editor. This way you can graphically ensure the curve is smooth. Set the last key on that curve to a linear tangent to ensure a constant velocity transition into the next path animation. Finally, create a third helper point and constrain it to the third path. Set it to start at frame 220, exactly where the previous one left off. The second and third paths are meant to represent one continuous stroke. Set it to end at about frame 330. Assign a Bezier controller as you did earlier. Make sure you delete any key at frame 0, but set the key at frame 220 in a linear tangent mode. This is again important to ensure a smooth transition from the previous helper animation. Create additional keyframes so that you can slow down the motion for the three loops. Slide the keys across to adjust the speed of the animation. Again, use the curve editor to adjust the position and values of the keyframes to ensure a smooth animation. Keep adjusting the timing until you get an effect you like. Once done, save your work as you are now ready to animate the ink flow. This is what you will do in the next movie.